Hello, and welcome to the Knitter Beal podcast. I'm Sarah Beal, and this is a podcast about uh, primarily knitting and a little bit of about my life and health. And if you're here for the knitting, that's at the beginning, so stay tuned. Today is a Monday, March 22nd, and um, I'm recording here in the Sierra foothills of California. I'm a mother and wife, um, mother of two children, seven and 14, a son and daughter. So anyway, um, you have not seen me for a while because I was, well, I will go ahead and say a little bit about my health right now just because it's the reason for the absence. I had been um, undergoing some treatments because my GBHD, um, which is graft versus host disease, had really flared up in January and caused my face to swell like a balloon and uh, really, really affect my lips and the state of my mouth and, and all sorts of things. But I'm on some new medications and I'm um, undergoing photophoresis to try to calm that all down. So um, I finally feel comfortable in front of a camera again so I can record. So we have so many things to show you because I've been away for so long. And at first I didn't even feel like knitting. I mean, I was really down. So I had, I just didn't even have a knitting mojo at the time, but I slowly got that back and now I've been on a roll. So I have a lot of things to show you. Let's start with some finished projects. Um, finished objects number one. So, look, I have socks. These are my Debbie Bliss Rialto luxury yarn socks with the afterthought heel. And in case you can tell, these socks have slightly different heel placements. I did not have one sock when I was putting the afterthought heel in for the other sock. So they're a little off, but you know what? They're mine and I can live with it. So <laughs> these finally got finished and I'm very happy to be wearing them. And it doesn't really bother me that they have a little bit of difference in their heel placement. It's just that one sock is slightly longer at the toe, you know, side than the other, but it doesn't really matter to me. So anyway, those are my first finished objects since the last time you saw me. Finish object number two. Now I actually don't have this finished object because I've sent it away. It was a gift for Diane Wilkinson, who is the owner and operator of Diane Wilkinson Catering. And so I, I got that that gift out to her. This is all that's left of the yarn from that project. It was made out of um, Plymouth Yarns Encore Mega. And of course, I do have, since I have knit this beanie so many times, it is called the World Stream Beanie. I actually have two of them sitting right here because I've made it, I think, six or seven times now. So I will show you what it looks like. So basically, I have two of them here. Now, these are not knit out of Plymouth Yarns um, on Cormega. These are some slightly different yarns. I don't remember what this one is, but I got this one at Michael's on a discount. You can see the rim, uh, the brim of the hat, slightly different on both of them. I think I only used five stitches um, of a one by one rib at the beginning of this one, um, which I don't like. I but I refuse to unknit it. I just wear it and and enjoy it. Um, now this one I did seven rows of that one by one rib, so it's um, got a better a better brim, and I think it stays on your head better, but. For some reason on this one, I, I just forgot that I was supposed to do seven rows and only did five. So this is called the World Stream Beanie. You can purchase it on Ravelry, and I'll leave a link to that on my um, show notes. But basically, her beanie, Diane's beanie, was knit out of this with a cute little gray pom-pom, and um, she told me that she was very thankful for that, that little gift. She had requested it, actually, after seeing the same one that I knit out of this yarn for my mother back in December. So I was happy to get that to her. Okay, number three was the random yarn. Remember last time I had gone a little overboard with buying sock yarn. Well, I had to knit one of them up right away. So 
I actually finished an entire pair of sock. I'm not going to put these on the sock blockers. They actually did get blocked on the sock blockers and they actually flattened out very nicely. Um, I really like how they turned out. It was only one ball of about 40 grams. So I decided to do a black toe and this is out of um, a, a different yarn that I had on hand. This was a self-striping yarn that I got just on eBay with a lot of um, uh, other sock yarns, a lot as in a, a bunch, <laughs> a, uh, a set of sock yarns that I purchased that way. And I love the way that the the green kind of pulls in the middle. I think that's kind of, it's kind of an aqua e green, but you can't really see that here. But I did a little reinforced heel. These are just a normal um, heel flap and gusset style sock. Um, so in case you guys are wondering, oftentimes people refer to um, their socks as vanilla socks. And apparently I had no idea what that was. <laughs> So I've been watching a few other podcasts lately, and it's just a term for plain socks. Your own pattern, somebody else's pattern, but just not anything that is like a set pattern. It's just kind of a basic sock pattern. So they call them vanilla socks. So these are my version of vanilla socks, and they fit me. However, I was knitting these socks at my mother's house. Um, a few weeks ago, and as I'm knitting them, she says, oh, those are totally my colors. I need to have those socks. So these, in fact, will be hers. She's been waiting and waiting to get them because, of course, I wanted to show them in the podcast. But um, now that I've been able to show them, I will be giving them to her. So those are my latest um, vanilla socks. Then we have this little beanie for a baby. So my boss um, at the office had a grandson um, while I was away from work last year from the cancer uh, treatments and things. And so her son, I believe, um, and daughter-in-law had a baby. So it was a boy and so I I knitted up this this little beanie. It was just again my own design. I put a little four a four stitch eye cord together. I basically knit he, up to here. I did a little um, garter stitch he, um, ear flap, and then I cast on some more stitches. Made a nether um, eye cord. Uh, with four stitches and then did another ear flap and cast on the rest of the stitches and then continued in the round. So basically um, that's, that's the little beanie I made for her. So it's actually going in the mail tomorrow so it was absolutely desperately needed that I record my podcast today because I needed to mail it tomorrow and I didn't want to not show you uh, this beanie. So actually it kind of looks like it needs to be blocked just slightly so I might spray that with a little bit of warm water tonight and let it sit before I stick it in the mail tomorrow because the, that brim needs to lay down just a little bit, it needs to behave. So I hope she enjoys that, but I do know that um, my best friend's sister, who is also expecting a boy, really likes this pattern. So I think I will be showing, um, knitting it again. And this time I, I, I may reduce the size of these ear flaps <laughs> They're a little large, but again, it was just knitting it from my own head and, and I thought that's how many stitches I needed, but I think I could reduce them a few stitches um, rather than having so many. I don't know what the yarn is. It was a ball from my stash. It was actually a hat I knit just like this one um, out of the same ball, and I think I actually have enough for a third one uh, from my stash as well. So I'll be knitting probably one more of these. Sorry, you'll have to see it again. So, number five. Okay, this one. So I was watching the podcast from Fiber Tales and she was knitting this beautiful Oslo hat um, and it turned out so beautiful. A little big because she apparently used the regular edition and there's also a mohair edition. So hers turned out the wrong sizing, but I think she redid it and Anyway, the mohair edition was so pretty. So I had some yarn in my stash that kind of looks mohairy. It's very vintage. It's actually very itchy uh, to, 
to me um, acrylic yarn that just has that halo look of mohair and I thought oh I would match it up with a little bit of um, this Kobu yarn from Lion Brand yarn to make the um, the held together feature of the Oslo hat but after I cast it on I realized that it was going to be more of a um, an Aran weight or even a worsted weight between those two yarns because they were just a little thicker than the fingering and mohair that the pattern had called for. I did buy the pattern and I still actually tease later I'll tell you about it. Um, the uh, this so I ended up deciding that this needed to be a cable knit hat. So I did not use a pattern. I basically cast on about it was about 90 stitches, uh, 88 stitches, probably 88 because it's a two by two rib. Um, I did that for a couple inches and then um, figured out a pattern between my 90 or 88 stitches or so and um, did a little slip stitch right here and some little right cables and left cables or whatever um, and then put a pom pom on top. So I actually have in mind <laughs> My best friend and I, we decided that this needs to go to somebody who is blonde. You can't really tell, but this is a very pink hat. <laughs> so we think that a blonde would really benefit from wearing this pink hat. So I think I have the girl in mind and I'll be sending it to her because um, it needs to be worn by somebody who's blonde. <laughs> okay, so those were all of my um, my finished objects. There were five. I can't believe it. So uh, I've been knitting away quite a bit <laughs> lately. So anyway, um, now works in progress. Whips. And first of all, we have the... So I actually started this um, just after the last podcast. Here. This is... I, I'm, I based the beginning off of the Scove Bear shawl by Fiber Tales, and she she basically talks about how to start her little shawl with these this little start. She actually has a tutorial video on how to do this shawl. And what I realized later is that my yarn is thicker than what she used, and my needle size was a little smaller than she used. So I did not get the same effect that she did, but I really like how it's turning out anyway. So basically, this is Ella Ray. Cozy Alpaca, and I'm actually already into my second ball, and this is the, the shawl, I think, um, let's see, so basically shawls are a little bit difficult to show because of course you grow in stitches and grow and grow and grow. Um, so actually this is going to be the edge, and this will be the part that is straighter edge. So it's supposed to be a crescent shaped shawl, so like I said. It's actually kind of backwards right now because this will be the straight edge and the other edge will be the curved edge. <laughs> it's hard to imagine, but bear with me and hopefully stick around for the next episode where maybe I'll have it done. But my best friend for whom I'm knitting this says that she would like a scalloped edge. So we are going to try something that I found on Ravelry that has a scalloped edge and hoping that that is how that will turn out. So since it will be the bottom of the shawl, or yes, the bottom of the shawl, then it will have some scalloped edges. So that's the shawl for my best friend, um, knit out of Ella Ray Cozy Alpaca. So then of course we have the potato chip scarf, which I did show in a previous episode uh, for my sister-in-law. So I am actually half way done with it now. So I don't think I had only finished just a tiny portion of it the first time I showed you. But um, this is also a pattern on Ravelry. I think you can find it elsewhere as well. But um, this is the potato chips uh, scarf. So basically um, I have knit one whole ball of yarn. And so I think, so I bought two and that's all this is going to be. But I think it will actually be enough. Um, I think it will be a really nice, nice um, sized scarf because right now it just goes basically halfway down my chest. So I think if it's full size, it will go, you know, around once and then have some good length to both sides. 
So I'm glad about that. Um, anyway, so that's the potato chip scarf. And it's also knit out of, I believe, Plymouth yarns, um, just black. So, um, and it's a worsted weight yarn, and I believe it is a blend of acrylic. And, um, and I think it's just acrylic. Uh, I don't believe believe in something else. If I find the ball band, I'll let you know when I finish it. So, that's the potato chip scarf. So, I actually have a, so from those many balls of sock yarn, again, that I ordered a few weeks ago, I have started and almost completed a second pair of socks. So, this is the Manny Petty yarn from um, Lion Brand Yarn, and as you can see, I already have one full sock hasn't been blocked yet, but this is this is the Manny Petty um, yarn from Lion Brand Yarn, and it's got this nice, this very very cute self-striping feature. And of course, again, I've knit these in my size. I only wear a size five and a half U.S., um, but they um, they do fit me. So anyway, I've knit one one sock already, and then I've got hmm, just about the leg portion done of the second sock. And they're on my chow goo um, needles. Just doing a vanilla sock, just plain 56 stitches and a few inches of leg, a heel flop and gusset, basic toe with a kitchener stitch um, grafting at the end. So I don't have any specific way I do my sizing except just putting it on and trying it on, seeing if it fits. Um, again, this is my Chowgu size 1, uh, 32 inch uh, needles. So those are my second whip. And I really like these little balls of Manny Petty from Lion Grin, um yarn. And I love the striping effects. I don't mind that there's kind of these white patches in it. I think it's, it kind of reminds me of like a good pair of jeans or it's got some like color, you know, variations in it. But I think this one's called Boot the Colorway. Um, so anyway, that's work in progress number three. So then, this is my favorite. So what I was talking about earlier was that Oslo hat from um, uh, Ravelry that I bought uh, the pattern for that Fiber Tails had knitted. And I was so in love with that hat when I saw her podcast on it. I think it was episode 27. So anyway, I looked through my stash and I bought the pattern. And so basically I found that I had um, these two yarns. So basically it's Debbie Bliss Rialto, um, a Rialto Luxury Sock, which is of course a fingering weight yarn. And then I had this old ball, which is out of, out of stock. You know, they don't make it anymore. I'm sorry, out of commission, out of production, I guess, um, of this mohair acrylic blend. So basically these are the, um, these are the balls here. So basically I am using this mohair held together with this self-striping sock yarn. And this, so I have used up this much of the second ball, or the first ball of that yarn. But this is the Oslo hat. Now, <laughs> beware, this is very fuzzy and I love it. So this is what I finished, and I finished this this weekend. Oh, it's coming off of its stitches, coming off the needles here. But anyway, this is the hat. Now I saw what uh, Larka's hat looked like on Fabry Tales, and hers was very, very uh, flowy. Now I think it is because she had blocked it. Um, and I believe that mine will relax a little bit once I'm finished. So basically, um, in the pattern, it's a three-folded brim. So this is only one section of the brim, and I'll be folding it up and um, knitting a lot more stockinette stitch. So basically, it's a lot of stockinette. I started this actually Saturday. I knit till my hands hurt last night <laughs> because I was just so in love with it, and I love seeing how the yarn changes um, colors and patterns held together with this mohair. I just absolutely love it. And the reason I, um, I chose these is because of the weight. And of course, I have them in my stash, which is great. 
Um, so I just, I mean, this, this, um, I don't know if you can see how fuzzy this yarn is. It is just super fuzzy. <laughs> but it will not have a rolled brim. Again, the Oslo hat is, has a, uh, just a folded um, brim. So you'll see it once it's finished, of course. But um, that's my Oslo hat mohair edition. So I can't wait to um, show you how it turns out. And we'll see if I get that done by the next podcast. It's just a joy to knit. It's just all stuck in it. So it is a bit repetitive. But um, just, yeah, I love it. I love it. the feel of it. It's just so squishy. Just, I can't wait to wear it. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to keep it and knit something else for somebody else. <laughs> so that's the Oslo hat. Anyway, that's all of my um, works in progress. So actually, I have some acquisitions. And in fact, the first acquisition I had ordered with those other sock yarns. You imagine I was just on a sock yarn buying spree. Uh, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was because I was starting to feel yucky and you know, soon to have the GVHD really hit me. So I, I guess I was in need of some real retail therapy. I don't know. But the last thing, get some water. is my ball of yarn from Mace of Skeins. So basically, sorry about the crinkling. Um, I saw the podcast from the crazy sock lady, and she had got this yarn sent to her. Now, if this looks hot pink, if you're saying that correctly, it is not incorrect. That is actually what this is. It's hot pink and black, and it is a self-striping uh, sock yarn, and or not self-striping, it's a sock yarn, excuse me, and it is so adorable. The colorway name is called High School Sweetheart. Now, she put this out in February. I think it was, um, you know, that time of the month where everyone's giving chocolates and celebrating love and things like that. So, anyway, the, uh, the, the yarns were all given those kind of names like High School Sweetheart. So, anyway, um, I, I saw her unwrap it on her episode and I just, I had to have it. So, I ordered it. So, these are... Um, show you what it really looks like. Oh. Sorry about the crinkling. I know, I should have opened it first. But I hadn't even opened it. I've been waiting all this time just to show you. So this is, again, the yarn. This is hot pink, guys. I mean, like that really, really hot pink. I wish you could see it, but it is so much fun. And I cannot wait to make some socks. That I think I could get at least two pair of socks out of this, at my size at least. So maybe a pair for me, maybe a pair for someone else. But um, so much fun. That just, I just can't wait. It's 80% 80, 80 superwash merino, 20% nylon, so it'll be nice and strong and really soft. So that's my first acquisition. Then my husband, he is so great. He loves to shop at Goodwill. And he is always on the lookout. I've taught him exactly what to buy. Uh, no acrylic usually. Um, I really like it when I can get some natural fibers um, like wool. So this is actually 100% pure wool. So this is something I could felt if I wanted to. But I have in mind to make another one of those baby hats uh, or a few of those baby hats that are... Um, got the little ear flaps and things like this. So you imagine $1.49, what a deal. He's so great. So this is um, Patton's classic wool um, in natural. So that's acquisition number two. And the third, also a gift from my husband. <laughs> he is so good. And so he, again, found this at Goodwill just last week. And look, 69 cents, what a deal. Some, for some self-striping sock yarn. And look at the cute little pattern it's gonna make. Blues and purple and a dark gray and a little bit of white. So this is actually 55% wool and 30% nylon, also 15% bamboo. So it's actually called Bamboo and You <laughs> pattern. So that's the colorway, it's by Sensations. I didn't look up to see if 
if they still make this, but I can't wait to put some socks on the needles with this one. It looks like it's going to knit up really, really cute. So that's my last acquisition. So anyway, I think that's pretty much it for the podcast. I, I know I went through some things fast. I've been told by a few people that <laughs> I tend to talk a little fast, but I'm just excited. So anyway, those are my um, finished objects, whips, acquisitions. And um, again, I'm doing better. Finally, I could wear lipstick today. It was the first time I think in almost two months. Um, so I, like I said, I'm on some new meds and um, those are helping. And then also I'm going through photophoresis. So in case you don't know what that is, it's basically, um, it's similar to dialysis where um, blood is taken from you and processed um, and then put back in you um, through a process called apheresis. But the reason they call this one photophoresis is that basically the blood is taken out and uh, subjected to ultraviolet light um, so that it calms down the reaction your body has to T cells. So I actually will leave a little link that I found of a video that was done by, I think, um, Yale University that talks a little bit about how photophoresis works for GVHD patients. And it's very interesting and it's actually very non-invasive and the side effects are not that great. The, the biggest one is if you go into the sun immediately after you've had this procedure done within like the 24 hours after you've had it done, you could deal a severe sunburn because basically you're getting sunburn or suntan from the inside out. So your body wouldn't have enough time to react to the sun um, because it's already sunburned inside, like suntanned inside. So I think that's the best way to describe it. But apparently it really helps patients who are undergoing some skin lymphoma type uh, cancers. But then also they haven't done enough research in the sense of um, being approved by the FDA for um, uh, this photophoresis to work on GVHD. But they've found enough results that... that um, the doctors do feel that it's very beneficial for GBHD patients. So I'm very grateful to be doing that. So I'm doing that once a week, which is time consuming because you have to sit there for three hours with your arms held straight out. So I can't even knit, um, which was devastating to me to hear at the time because I thought, oh, more knitting time again. Because when I used to go to the infusion center last year during my cancer treatments, I could sit there and knit for hours and it was great but I can't even knit so I gotta I just sit there and relax <laughs> while they do this process so anyway um that's that's about it and um I hope you enjoyed the podcast and um I can't wait to show you more I can't wait to show you the Oslo hat really it's my favorite project right now so but I've got pizza uh <laughs> dough rising in the oven with the uh, light on no no oven on just light that's how i rise my pizza dough and um be making pizza for dinner so have a nice day and you can find me on ravelry as knitter beal you can find me on instagram as the knitter beal and um have a nice day thanks